scripture this morning comes from John 3, verses 14. Start at verse 14. These are Jesus' words. Just, had Mo just as Moses lifted up the snake in the desert, so the Son of Man must be lifted up, that everyone who believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. Whoever believes in him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe stands on condemned already because he has not believed in the name of God's one and only son. This is the verdict. Light has come into the world, but men love darkness instead of light because of their evil deeds. Everyone who does evil hates the light and will not come into the light for fear of his deeds will be exposed. But whoever lives by the truth comes into light so that it may be seen plainly and what he has done has been done through God. God's holy word. So welcome to our fourth Sunday in Lent. Uh, this week we will continue in our series dealing with the things that we should look to give up during this season and the uh, things we should look to be taking up during this season. So we talked about uh, taking up our crosses during the Lenten season. Um, and last week we talked about the need to give up our, our uh, sinning in anger, right? So before we begin this week's sermon, I gave you the challenge last week to not allow yourselves to sin in your anger. And I just want to pause and ask you a follow-up question from that sermon. How'd you do last week? How did you do not allowing yourself to sin in your anger? Now, I hope you were able to say you did really well. And again, I know that it's not an easy thing to do, but I think it's important. And I just wanted to remind you to be conscious of your thoughts and actions when you are angry. Now, a fair question for you all to ask me would be, well, pastor, how did you do this week not sinning in your anger? Did you sin in your anger at all? Well, uh, I did okay but there's always room for improvement. Uh, I know I was not perfect in my attempts this week, and I know this because I can remember waking up one day this week and instantly being angry as I woke up in the morning and cursing the fact that I had to get out of bed. Now, what I really needed is a reminder that each day is a gift from God. One that should be cherished and one that I should be thankful for each day that I wake up. And speaking of being thankful for what God has given to us, we can look to our scripture for this week. Now, part of this scripture this week is something I'm sure that you are all familiar with. It is a verse that even non-believers are aware of. We see it plastered on signs at sporting events and written all other sorts of places. And that, of course, is John 3, 17. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, 
but in order that the world might be saved through him. What? Wait, were you guys thinking I was going to talk about another verse when, when I gave it that sort of lead in, right? Well, what, if it's not John three seventeen, then everyone knows, then what verse is it? Oh, that's right, it's John three sixteen that everyone knows. That's right, that's the one that we see written on walls and on the side of mountains as you're driving around here and on signs. But this particular part of scripture, it is, it is lifted from the greater context in the chapter, uh, chapter 3 of John, where Jesus is meeting with a Pharisee named Nicodemus. And to his credit, you know, we often malign the Pharisees, right? And rightfully so, um, as we talk about them. But to his credit, Nicodemus has sought out Jesus uh, to ask him questions because he knows that Jesus is a great teacher. He tells him, I have seen the signs that you have worked. I know that you're a great teacher. Please, Jesus, tell me more. And as we consider these passages... And how they can speak to us during this season of Lent. I believe that there are two main things that we can take away as something that we should be doing during Lent. And something that we should be giving up during Lent. So first, let us talk about the thing that we should be doing during Lent. And truly every day. And that is being thankful. Being thankful for the words of John 3.16 and what they mean for us. For God so loved the world, he gave his only son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. Now, I don't know about you, or how you think about yourself when it comes to God and your relationship with him, but for me, I am constantly amazed that he sent his son to die for me. That he loves me so much that he is willing to do this so that I can have eternal life with him. Now I need to tell you, I, I do love you all greatly. I do. But if you were to ask me to sacrifice my one and only son, Alan, for you, I don't know that I would be able to do that, depending on the day. Some days... I may easily do that. But I know when we think about ourselves, we tend to believe that we are good people. And I, I believe that is a very true statement. However, are we good enough to deserve such love from God? Well, if we are honest with ourselves, I think the answer would be a resounding no. And when I consider what I am in the grand scheme of the world and in the grand scheme of time, the truth is that I am nothing more than a grain of sand in a vast desert. I am nothing more than a blip in the grand scheme of time. Sure, I'm important to some people in this world. But if I were to be stacked up against everyone who's ever lived throughout time and everyone that will ever live throughout time, truly, I am nothing. And yet God loves me so much that he is willing to give up his son's life for me. And when I think about that, how can I be anything other than thankful? How can I be anything other than completely overwhelmed by his love for me? You see, that is what we need to remember during our lives. We are truly loved by the greatest being that has ever existed. Yes, we face hardships. Yes, we struggle through difficulty. And yet God loves us. We all sin and we all let him down. We all fail to live up to the level of being worthy of God's love. And yet, he loves us anyway. I think that we can all use a reminder just how great his love is. So during the Lenten season, I want you to strive to remember that you are loved by God. So much more 
than you could possibly understand. Now, the second thing that I believe we can take away from our scripture for today is indeed found in John 3.17, which I will remind you says, Indeed, God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Now, you might be thinking, hey, sure, that, it's a nice verse, Pastor, but it really does pale in comparison to the one that comes right before it, right? There's a reason why we see John 16 written on all the signs and not John 3.17 written on all the signs, right? And yet there is a powerful message for us for what we should be giving up during Lent to be found in John 3.17. If God sent his son into the world to save it and not to condemn it, then why do we as his followers spend so much time condemning others? Why do we waste our energy and focusing on how others fail in this world? Is it to make ourselves feel better? Well, sure, I sin, but I don't sin like that guy does. Well, I will remind you that sin is sin to God, regardless of what it is. There is no distinction when it comes to sin and God. You know, yeah, I messed up sometimes in my life, but look at that guy. He's so far gone. There is no way anyone could bring him back. Well, that person is a child of God, just as you are. Jesus came to save them just as he came to save you. I'm not sure when we as a people of God decided it was more important for us to condemn others of their faults instead of loving them despite their faults. Now, whenever I talk about this with people, I often get this question posed back to me. And you may well be thinking it this morning. You may be thinking, hey, pastor, are we not called to point out when other people sin to them? Are we not supposed to keep people accountable? You are correct. We absolutely should be doing that. However, we need to be doing that out of love and concern for that person, not out of judgment for that person. Pointing out someone's sins to them shouldn't sound like this. And I have to tell you, I chose names at random um, for my little story here. So if your name appears and a couple of your names will appear, don't take it personally. So when we point out someone's sin, it shouldn't sound like this. Hey, Bob, did you hear about Jim? Oh, man, I saw him sinning away at the bar the other night. Oh, what was I doing there? Oh, I was just picking up dinner. Don't worry, I wasn't staying. But Jim, he was trashed. Oh, oh no, he, here he comes, Bob. Can you believe that he had the nerve to show up to church today? I'm just going to ignore him. I don't want any of his bad choices rubbing off on me. Now, if you really cared about Jim, you would be saying this to him and not to Bob. And it might sound something more like this. Hey, Jim. Good to see you this morning. Glad you made it. You know, I happened to see you at the bar the other night. I'm not sure if you saw me, but I noticed that you were really, really tying one on. You know, is everything okay with you? Is there anything I can do for you? Completely different approaches, right? Completely different. See, we are called to love others, not to condemn them. And I know that that can be a hard thing. And I know, believe me, I know there are people out there that are hard to love. Yet if we are following what God has called us to do, then we should be doing our best to love them anyways. We need to remind ourselves that Jesus came to save them the same way that he came to save us. So as we go forth during this Lenten season, let us remember to be thankful for all that God has done for us and let us love others instead of condemning them. Amen.
My challenge for you this week is to take time every day this week to thank God what he has done for what he has done for you. Amen.